Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today it's time to get back to work on fixing the ailerons. Okay, before we begin fixing the mess that's called the ailerons, um, this will be uh, the last, it's not the last video of this series. The Fulker will be going into hiatus so we can get back to work on painting up the stomp SV4. I stopped today uh, to get some yellow paint and as much as I don't like showing product name on it, for those of you that live here in America, um, unfortunately it's only here in America, it possibly up in Canada. Uh, the Ace brand paint uh, out of the hardware store chain um, this is made by Krylon, and it's, I believe it's the Krylon Color Master, which is their old school paint that works great. And to me, it's still my favorite paint out there. Um, so luckily I know I've got contacts at the hardware store. I've known them for decades. And I found out that their paint was, at the time, a couple years ago, was made by Krylon. But unfortunately, it does not say so on, on, on the bottle, on the bottle, on the can. Um, thing is, it uses the same exact color. I was going to go with the Krylon, even if I got it in the color Max. Uh, hopefully you can see that. Let's see if we can get it to edit. There it is. It's called Sunshine Yellow. Um, and that's what Krylon calls there. So I'm just assuming that it is correct that that's what makes it. So, uh, the problems I had in the past with their, uh, oh my gosh, I've got it here somewhere because we use a dual bond that was better, and I think the other stuff was called Supermax. Yep. That's what it was. It was called Krylon Supermax All-in-One, and this stuff was the one that I was in contact with Krylon, with their chemists, to figure out why it was doing what it was doing um, to the Paint, the, the paint that was the first coat that I put on, when I put the second coat on, it lifted the first coat. And that was their paint on top of their paint. Uh, I ended up finding out later on at the trail end of that build with the Taylorcraft that what I had to do is once that paint dried, just shoot some Krylon primer on top of it, then I can shoot another coat of that and then it didn't lift. So that got rid of my problem. I, I just don't want to use this stuff again because the experience I had. So we're going to go with this and it's it's possibly a little bit brighter yellow than I wanted to go with. So this ended up being uh, the closest to the yellow uh, that I got from the plane online. I mean, it's just a picture. You don't know how well it's going to be, but it was a, it was a brighter yellow. It didn't have a, like a little bit of orange tinge to it. So I'm going with this one and I believe that this is going to be the same color yellow that uh, on the Fulker that we're going to be putting upstairs that Lothar Richtofen used on his uh, D7. So uh, yeah, so we're going to probably, we're trying to share the same color yellow just between the two planes just to make it uh, easier on me. So let me go ahead, we'll get the other camera set up uh, and then I'm just going to walk you through the very beginning part of how we're going to uh, fix this because this is just all wrong he even had to put a he even had a sister in a piece of balsa just to correct the error hopefully you can see it there's the error right there underneath it uh, there was no gluing surface that he could attach it to so he had a sister in a piece so we're going to go ahead we're going to put a little piece of a filler in the bottom of this one uh, sand it down uh, and then here we're going to remove this side of it because we, we have to remove it otherwise it's going to make the aileron tip look wrong. And then of course this side of, was the one where he put this piece here on the wrong side and he had to try to tail it out here. So this whole section right here, all the laminate, that will be all redone. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and build it so that it matches uh, the plans because these don't. So let me get everything set up, bring it right back. 24 hours later. All right, now that I'm back down in the shop, yesterday it didn't turn out as nicely as I was hoping uh, to do video stuff. Got tied up doing too much other stuff for work. Beautiful way to start your day off. Anyway, uh, back to the fun and excitement of ailerons. 
All right, hopefully you can see everything good through the overhead camera. Now what I had to do, because I'm gonna go ahead and I have to rebuild the whole ends of these. The rest of them are workable. Um, there's just a couple rib caps I've gotta replace, but I think I can work with the rest of the ailerons because everything else lines up. It was just the issues with where this joins, uh, I don't know, let's just, call it, let's just call it the outer end of the aileron. Um, and how he had it sanded with that and with this thing. This is the, the actual number on this was a W13. And now you can probably see W13. All right, so what we had to do is I sanded this end down here so that it's at the right angle for the way it needs to go ahead and join up with this piece here. So that part, I'm good. I need to make two of these um, just because this one was not cut right. Uh, I'm hoping with the amount I have to sand off the, the leading edge of it uh, up here, the little pointy bit, um, I might be able to make it close to work. If not, these are very easy to cut out. So it's just some eighth inch balsa and just trace around and cut it out. So I'm, so I'm good on those. So what I have to do on this end to make this end work the way I want it to, I went ahead and on the plans, I traced out around the plans. Uh, in this piece here, it's kind of hard to see. I'll explain this piece why I've got that little teeny triangle uh, at the end of this one and on this one. Uh, what they did on this set of plans is that on the end of it, they had it set up so that, as you can see, there we go, the joint, the, there was no overlap there. That was straight across, and that's just something I, I, I don't do that. So that's what the little triangular pieces are. <clears throat> this is what I'll do on the top piece of this one. So the top piece, this angle will still be here. As such it will, uh, there we go, on the, on the bottom piece. So both bottom pieces will be cut exactly the way they were originally. There we go, sorry about that. Um, but what I'm gonna do is on the top piece, I'm gonna cut this off on the bottom and I'm going to leave this one attached on the top. That way we have a triangular shape of, uh, just so that way we're just strengthening the whole tip. Um, it's, that's the proper way to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these things cut out in the bandsaw and then I'll bring it back. Let's get things glued up. All right, the way this is all set up, I've got four of them glued together. Two of them need to have uh, this little piece cut off and two of them have to stay on. The other end, this little piece just gets cut off, so there's only two of those that are getting cut. This is where everything's gonna match. So in the last one, uh, this is a little fang uh, with the part that goes over onto the trailing edge of the uh, aileron, so this will be left intact just the way it is. Now, the way I glued those little pieces on, uh, stuff made for little grade school kids, kindergartners, yeah, it's glue. Um, and this stuff, works very nicely it's just more time sensitive and right now with me talking to you guys it's just binding a bonding a little bit harder with the uh, uh with the balsa but i've never had a problem taking this off so let me go ahead and get these pieces cut be right back all right as you can see i've got all four pieces cut out and assembled and that's the way it needs to look uh, as you can see i'm going to go ahead and take part of the top layer off and you can see, if I don't push stuff around too much, and I just did, you can see that we will have that overlap. So once this is glued into place, um, we will have the overlap right here and everything will work out and be much stronger than it was originally. So let me go ahead, get these things glued together. I'm gonna lay down some wax paper on top of here because I wanna use the plans as the template. So as soon as this is all glued together, I'll show you what it looks like and then how I'm gonna go ahead and get these little pieces, there we go, sanded down properly to where it's gotta be so that this is flush with the top of this. All right, both pieces have been properly glued together. Now, as you can see, there's a seam there and there's the seam over there. So now these two pieces are much stronger uh, than they were before with as much torque as I'm putting on this right now that would have snapped. Uh, let me just go ahead and show you. With, with, there we go with this. Oh, it's actually a little bit stronger than I thought. Well, but see, it's still brittle. 
Uh, it was a little bit stronger than I thought it was, but as soon as uh, this stuff does fail, it fails. So I still would have rather not done it this way. So what this is looking like now, that's how it's going to get lined through. Here's where the W13, if I can locate it, will sit. This will sit over here, and I've got to go ahead and make adjustments to how this is going to fit. And it's going to be... It's going to be pretty close to fitting. I know I'm going to have to go ahead and recut this piece because I need to match the angle at which this hits the leading edge of the aileron. Alright, so this part's going to fit in here. Believe it or not, the little piece I use as a demonstration is the perfect thickness. So there we go. I don't have to make anything. So we're going to go ahead and lift this up. And I'm looking at the angle. I'm using the plant itself for the angle that this needs to sit at. <coughs> it's going to be a little bit undersized because it's always easier to make things bigger than to make things smaller. So right now I'm just holding this firmly down. This part is still up. I'm going to go ahead and start sanding across. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, just so I can start lowering this edge down. So it should be very gentle. I'm slightly lifting up on this. I'm not pressing this side down because I want to make sure that this is not going to possibly fall apart. All right, right now everything is down and it's going through smoothly. I still have maybe, I don't know, a sixteenth of an inch over here. And uh, if I need to remove that, uh, I've got many different ways to do it. I could do it with the Zona saw. I could do it with one of my many other little files. But this is how I wanted to make sure that I had approximately the right height, oops, to have that at that proper angle, have it sanded down. So let's see how it fits. And although you can't see it, it does fit flush. Let me see if I can get this held in the proper position and raise it up just so you can see it. And see, okay, that's how it sits flush. And it sits flush on both sides, just like that. So that's the proper way to do those. All right, so this one's almost ready to be glued into place. I have to come back in. I'll turn this little sanding block stick off to the side and sand it down just a little bit get this thing all lined up uh, and then I'll just come right back and glue this into position on this aileron so then all we got to do is start working on the the little W13 piece all right so with everything properly glued back into place uh, with the exception of the the rib caps uh, the right aileron is rebuilt on the on the outboard edge of it so uh, I'm happy with this. This came out very nice. Uh, so I've just got to go ahead and do the other side just the same as this. As you saw, I've already got the parts glued up for it. I've just got to go ahead uh, and make another W13. And the blank for that starts out looking like that. And then by the time I'm all done, it'll fit in perfectly just like this side did. So let me go ahead, switch cameras. And I will show you how well it came out. Uh, as you can see, once again, the gaps we are looking for uh, that we wanted to get rid of. This is taken care of here uh, on this because it's still, everything's still wet. So if you take a look at this side, what I normally do anytime I've got 
part of a plane where I want to have a little bit more reinforcement, even though everything's properly super glued together. What I'll do is I'll come in and of this one on this side here and also here, but on the inside. Uh, I, I ran in a bead of thick CA and then just hit it with some kicker just so that you've got a little bit more strength. It's like making a little bit of a gusset out of super glue. Uh, do I expect this to break? Absolutely not. Um, so, so I'm happy with this. So what I have to do uh, once again is just the rib caps um, on the bottom of this one and this is complete. Then on the other side of course I've already got the parts I've just got to go ahead and put together. So yeah it easier than i thought no uh a little bit more complex absolutely but it was not difficult it's just a matter of taking time and and trying to do it right the first time so the next time you see me back down in the shop we'll be getting everything prepped for paint on the stomp so i still have to uh i've got oh my gosh three more coats of dope on all surfaces minimum it might be four but right now guaranteed three um, with the last two being filler and then at that point uh, just start shooting paint on it so i'll see you guys next time back down in the shop